My name is Martin B. Leon. I'm a professor of medicine at Columbia University and I'm the director for the Center for Interventional Vascular Therapy at New York Presbyterian Hospital Columbia. At NYP Columbia, we've developed a comprehensive structural heart disease program over the past decade. This means that we have a multidisciplinary heart team involving cardiologists, interventionalists, imaging experts, and surgeons who see every patient provide personalized and customized diagnoses and therapy using both conventional techniques such as medical therapy and surgery and investigational and new transcatheter techniques such as TAVR and MitraClip. Structural heart disease really consists of two relatively distinct but interrelated entities. The first is valvular heart disease and um, certainly highest among the areas in valvular heart disease is the new work being done in aortic stenosis with the TAVR or TAVR procedure. But we also have many patients that have non-valvular structural heart disease problems such as atrial fibrillation requiring left atrial appendage closure or, or PFO closure or patients that have heart failure where we have new devices to treat heart failure using structural transcatheter techniques. Structural heart disease is a relatively new area within endovascular and coronary therapy um, among the entire field uh, within this modern era of percutaneous cardiovascular interventions. Over the past decade, we've developed this structural heart disease program, which incorporates different physicians to try to manage our most complex patients with valvular and non-valvular heart disease. This allows us to take physicians with special areas of expertise to be able to make diagnoses, personalized care, special investigational and customized therapy to get the absolute best outcomes for each and every one of our patients. NYP Columbia is different than other hospitals because of the level of expertise that we have amongst each of the subspecialists that work in the structural heart disease area and also because of our commitment to investigation, academic pursuits, and having access to some of the newest therapies that may be available for patients. Frankly, I believe that the structural heart disease program at NYP, Columbia, and Cornell is the finest in the world. We have the greatest experience. We have been involved in not just participating in clinical trials or doing procedures, but innovating those clinical trials and inventing those procedures. And that really differentiates us from our colleagues who work at other institutions. I think the experience that we've had at NYP, Columbia, and Cornell over the course of a decade, both as innovators in terms of inventing new therapies and in participating and leading some of the most important clinical trials, sets us apart from other institutions in that we have the perspective to be able to provide the best treatment options for patients and some of the newest therapies that are not otherwise available. NYP, Columbia, and Cornell is an ideal environment to take care of these complex patients with structural heart disease. The hospital has the finest facilities. They've committed to provide the finest personnel and infrastructure to manage these difficult patients and to allow us to be able to grow a program which has now become probably the premier program in the country. NYP, Columbia, and Cornell have been leaders in academia and training since the beginning of structural heart disease. We've led the most important clinical trials. We have enrolled the largest number of patients. We have trained the most number of physicians around the United States. And NYP has allowed us to have an environment that fosters and encourages this kind of participation in not just taking care of patients, but leading in academics, education, and training. The fastest growing area in interventional cardiology is structural heart disease. We expect that in the next 10 years that there'll be a, a four times growth in TAVR procedures in the United States. We're now leading some of the premier new clinical trials in other indications for treating patients with aortic stenosis. Similarly, we have a host of new studies in mitral and tricuspid disease that I think will serve as the next generation of new therapies for patients that are currently not well served with complex valvular heart disease. TAVR really has evolved over the past decade. It's almost be become a routine procedure. This will be the third year in a row that we've done over 400 cases at NYP Columbia and between Columbia and Cornell we do the largest number of TAVR cases in the United States. So the procedure itself continues to evolve, but it's plateauing a bit. But the techniques that we've learned from TAVR, including the use of imaging, 
the heart team approach has now been transposed into the management of other valvular heart disease syndromes. So we are now leading clinical trials in mitral and tricuspid disease with exotic and novel new devices that I'm certain are gonna have an impact on patient care in the future. For the past decade, we've been treating generally high risk and difficult patients with TAVR. Now we're involved in routine risk or low risk studies. We're even treating patients that have no symptoms but severe aortic stenosis with TAVR. Assuming these clinical trials are going to justify the use of TAVR, this will bring forward a whole new explosion of TAVR use in patients that otherwise would not have been treated and now have less invasive early discharge options for managing their problems.